In today's video, micro SD memory cards, which are the preferred ones in terms of price performance and performance for many various use cases. More on that in today's video. <laughs> You can use micro SD memory cards for a whole lot of different use cases. So we decided to split up the video in three main sections. Number one are recommendations for, let's say, everyday usage, a good all-rounder card. So let's say in your Android smartphone, tablet, running apps, saving photos, videos, all that kind of stuff. So good all-rounder. Number two is really video-centric. So let's say in your drone, in your action cam, in your gimbal, really video-focused. Number three is also video, but a very specific part meaning dash cam, surveillance cameras and such kind of stuff. Maybe they are running 24-7, so it's a really different kind of usage or load compared to normal video applications. So let's start. Now my top three memory cards for, let's say, using it in your Android smartphone, tablet, running apps, saving images, saving videos, all that kind of stuff. One interesting card is the Lexa Play series. Currently, yeah, let's say roughly nine to 10 cents per gigabyte. So also not really expensive. The next one is the Samsung Pro Plus series. Usually, yeah, sometimes a bit cheaper even than the Lexa Play, Play series, at least as time of uh, recording of this video. So it's really, really cheap, but also a very fast card, obviously. And last but not least is the Sabrent Rocket V30 series, tested here in the 512 gigabyte version. It's a really fast card, so it's good in running apps, read and write performance for yeah, random read writes, IOPS, so that's really high. Good copy speed, so writing images, reading images, video, all that kind of stuff. Also, compatibility is really, really great because, let's say, for the Samsung Pro Plus or other cards like the Kingston Canvas Go Plus, you know, all cards that have higher speeds than roughly 100 megabytes per second and are UHS-1 cards, they're using kind of an, let's say, a proprietary, yeah, standard, semi-standard. So it can have some compatibility issues with some readers. Meanwhile, the Sabrent V30A2 is just a standard UHS-1 card, so compatibility is really, really great. So a good price performance, good performance card, and really high compatibility. So that's the micro SD card to go if you're looking for a good all-rounder, especially using in your smartphone or tablet. Standard video recording, that's the easy part, at least for this video. As already mentioned, there are cards like the Lexa Fly series, yeah, really branded for, as you can see here, drone footage and all that kind of stuff. But that's just marketing, at least from my point of view. Because the SD Association, or SD Card Association, so that's the association behind SD memory cards, standardizing like form factors, interfaces, all that kind of stuff. So you have a good compatibility and real-world usage. And they came up with the video speed classes, as you can see here on this side, for as an example, V30, U3, and Class 10. So it's a topic for a different video, but basically it's like a minimum white performance requirement those cards have to met. And it standardizes how each manufacturer can measure and can validate those figures. So let's say if you're buying an V30 and or U3 class memory card, you can rest assured that you can use it for every camera that require an U3 or V30 memory card for 4K video recording. Therefore, you can choose whatever V30 or U3 validated memory card you can find on the web. 60-75% of all micro SD memory cards have a V30 or U3 class certification. So just grab a U3 or V30 card that has a good price performance. 
but there's one exception. Let's say you want to use your micro SD cards in bigger cameras like in Sony Alpha 7 IV, Nikon Z8 and yeah, all that kind of great camera stuff. So, of course, you can also use normal size SD memory cards and that's my recommendation if you want to use SD memory cards with those type of cameras because yeah, your choice is much better, better in terms of real high performance micro SD memory cards. You could get really interesting stuff like this Delkin PowerSave uh, series with V90 certification. So three times as fast as the normal V30 memory cards. Therefore, it's capable of recording up to 8K video or in terms of the Sony Alpha 7 IV, 4K video with 120 frames per second or intracoding. So that's possible as well. The problem is that there are basically, I don't know, three, four, five micro SD memory cards available with UHS2 interface and those real high speeds. If you really wish to use micro SD plus adapter, maybe because your tablet or notebook, ultrabook, macbook only supports micro SD memory cards, maybe that's the way to go. Um, besides is the Delkin V90 series, you can also grab one of those cards. So here the ProGrade card and here the Angelbird card, both V60 certified, so not good enough for 8K video, at least in most cameras, but let's say for a high quality 4K video with 60 frames per second, 10 bit recording, you know, all that kind of stuff that should usually work. Last but not least, high endurance memory cards for a dash cam surveillance camera usage and all that kind of stuff. And maybe some background information again, why is it important to choose specialized high endurance memory cards for those type of applications? Because on a first thought, let's say for surveillance cameras, yeah, maybe it is 4K recording, but usually not with, let's say, 24 or 30 frames per second, as in, yeah, bigger cameras, drones, action cams, whatsoever but two frames per second, five frames per second, or maybe dash cams with normal frame rates, but yeah, maybe not that high quality image quality. The difference is the type of usage. So let's say for a surveillance camera, usually it's 24 seven recording. So a normal camera in, yeah, let's say your smartphone or your gimbal action cam, you shoot a lot of video, you go to your PC or Mac, you know, removing or copying these files to your PC and then deleting all video files on the card, putting it back in the camera. Meanwhile, in a dash cam or a surveillance camera, it's recorded 24 seven, often in types of wing recording. So if the memory card is full, the recording starts in the front again, so overriding what was already on the card. And it's really difficult for normal memory card controllers to keep the card in a good, healthy condition. So it's really demanding, even though the white speed maybe is not too high. And therefore, those cards are really made for this type of usage. So if you want to use your micro SD card in a dash cam, in a surveillance camera, grab one of those. One card that is barely available in North America, but in other parts of the world is the Kyoxia High Endurance Memory Card. Kyoxia is the new name for Toshiba memory products used for a couple of years now. The good thing about this high endurance memory card, it's the only one we've tested with an app speed class of A1. So in theory, you could also use it in your, yeah, let's say smartphone or whatsoever. The other two cards that are really great in terms of price performance are the Samsung Pro Endurance, I had to cut through the name, but anyway, and also the 350 50 V series from, from Trendcent. If you have to choose between both memory cards, I would pick the Trendcent card. Why? The Samsung Pro Endurance only has speed class V10, so it's not really capable for 4K video, at least with normal frame rates. 
there. But the Transcend U350 V series has an U3 or V30 certification, so you can also use that one for normal 4K video recording. So it would be, yeah, my card to go. A lot of information compressed into a yeah, more or less short video. If you want to have a look on all data we measured, check out the link in the video description below. There you can find all 33, I think, uh, memory cards we tested or micro SD memory cards we tested. Price performance index is updated every hour, so it is my recommendation to check out the website as well, memorycard.expert, or as mentioned, the link in the video description. Thank you so much for watching, and if you already didn't, then please consider to subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Bye bye.